Welcome back and time for market moves on MT4. Today on the 25th of October, just a couple of days until the month is ending. Yeah, another winning position from our side here yesterday, which was obviously not bad. The euro against the Canadian dollar has worked out nicely and our okay, case, so this trade worked out to my liking. Was supposed to be a short-term position now I have to look Friday. We are on the hourly chart here on Friday. It's this day here. We opened the buy trade. The market corrected a little bit, but seemingly yesterday continued to favor the upside momentum. Now on the four-hour chart, we can see that's what happened here. The uptrend seemingly still in play. And uh, obviously in this case here, the market trending towards higher levels then kicked us out of this position at the high point. Where was it? Uh, uh, 35.70 something, uh, 135.75. Good start for the week, obviously uh, getting a bit of a return going here. And um, of course, in this case also, starting a bit fresh where markets to my liking are a bit shaky and yes we were i think a bit lucky after the push on friday because the market on friday pushed here higher but closed bearish and that was yesterday my uh, point where i also stated not only in the hot assets but also on our telegram group that i said guys we might be better off uh, observing the position and uh, maybe taking action at some point not needed as the market pushed us out in profit and hence obviously the trade had worked nicely what's up uh, with the oil market uh, for the day here oil is seemingly just trading sideways there are some signs it's weakening a little bit yet it's also seemingly well supported when we at least uh, look at this current area it's also impacted by the daily pivot level so some sort of support might be seen. On the other hand, also the market might start pushing it to the outside uh, somehow. However, I don't have any feeling and I would go with the longest trend, which is seemingly telling me that further correction back into this uh, area, which I marked with the uh, uh, happiness point here. This is where I see the market somehow in the next couple of trading days, rather, unless, uh, unless I'll see some other uh, views in this case. The push to the upside, kind of blocked by the 50 moving average retracement, which was actually looking quite good. And the market uh, basically like two weeks ago, looked like it could really push back to the upside. As uh, back, I think towards even Friday, the market looked like this, basically this bearish or this candle, which turned, which ended bearish. And that's the correct term here. In between looked like this, which could have been actually a rather bullish candle, right? When the market pushes high, bit of a retracement, and then pushing back to the upside is what I've expected uh, here. But Friday then really caused the market to turn lower, acting and then on supporting a further bearish momentum here uh, with this market actually being right down in lower areas. Oil market, we got some information from maybe from Russia, which should not be neglected. Uh, we got the information oops, um, that uh, potentially, and this guy is not... Uh, running for the show here boris johnson who is not uh, pushing through with his uh, kind of re-election after being ousted say richie sunak the uh, um, uh, previous uh, chancellor of the exchequer has obviously kind of made the race to turn the new prime minister he's going to go to king charles the third uh, today actually appearing and applying for the job in this case uh, illegally which uh, seems to work out. The question, of course, uh, in this case here uh, might be if financial markets taking this uh, as a positive uh, support over the next, uh, into the next future or the next couple of trading days or weeks. Yet he's going to keep Jeremy Hunt, who is his uh, uh, chancellor of the exchequer and uh, seemingly could support the market somehow further. I wanted to talk about rather actually uh, what we got from Russia. There's something interesting to uh, to uh, kick in here. Um, potentially a Russian side, that's from a German news side here, um, the Russia is claiming that the Ukraine is working on a radioactive dirty bomb. Uh, there's no documents being or no support being given apart from the potential, how do you call it, apart from the potential propaganda in use uh, in this case. Seems to be quite weird to me as well. Why should uh, uh, the Ukraine use any sort of uh, atomic warheads on their own soil? If so, unless uh, maybe attacking uh, the Russian side, but uh, by all means, this sounds to me a bit uh, 
extremely exaggerated. But the, uh, um, this, in this case, it could, of course, uh, increasingly concern markets as, uh, in this case, uh, battlefield failures. That's something maybe to concern as well uh, from the Russian side. And the push into the big corner of Russia uh, uh, enables them to really act uh, that bad. Um, the question is on how the situation will move on and uh, on how much uh, and how bad the uh, Russian side will potentially act in this case, or as they claim, counteract against something which I think is not true. But whatever, it doesn't matter what I think. It's just a matter of what we can see and what we get here in terms of the current uh, the current uh, conflict. That would be something which I would say could impact, of course, medium term, the oil market pushing this uh, oil market uh, uh, higher and uh, in this case uh, uh, causing market momentum uh, towards uh, higher levels, uh, causing that uh, there is further motivation maybe for oil to move uh, to the upside. Um, in this case, what else do we look at? We see some sort of a dollar momentum. So let's move back uh, towards the US dollar here in general. The market uh, in this case here moving or retraining, retracing still has not done anything much. And uh, I would say at the moment, it's just time to digest further moves. Slight strength of the dollar is what we can observe though. We can see that uh, the market motivation here in this case is not giving us anything much as volatility remains quite low. So the story as we've seen and expected in the recent couple of trading days uh, remains the same. We are uh, trading towards a resistance zone here, moving average looking to be uh, quite strongly helping the market to be in favor of a stronger dollar. And honestly, this is something where I would say we could take into consideration for a short term trade and we could use this in order to see and to trade the market accordingly towards the lower area. I don't want to clear all my trend lines here. Let me check. Um, yes, the ATR is actually quite low. That's the key takeaway here. We have some nice zone if we are looking at this area back based on the hourly chart and we have a nice resistance zone here um, of the height. So that could give us something interesting um, to begin with. Basically, market running off the daily chart into a resistance zone. That's the one thing, but also market running to the downside here, in this case, uh, causing the market to be of a negative in nature, uh, in this case, after running to this area as based on the hourly chart, which seems to break uh, the lows here. Um, and of course, after what we've also seen, Monday bullish and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the market might run towards downside areas. In this case, um, also yields might be of interest. They turn slightly lower. Let's look, uh, look, look. Let's look at the short term yields here on the uh, two year, maybe also for a second on the uh, daily chart, because uh, there I saw that the market has uh, given us a bit of a pin bar here. It's quite small, but I don't want to uh, forget about it, right? So yields fell initially here yesterday, but turned slightly higher this could be a bit of a support if we are looking for one. However, I would only take this into the longer term weekly or monthly chart regarding the yields uh, into consideration. So yields are stable at the current levels. Uh, I would at least have to say here, which might be another information which could be uh, seen as a headwind uh, for the euro causing the market to turn lower based on the price action we can observe here at this recent trend line which uh, actually uh, seemingly starts uh, helping the us dollar to gear up some sort of momentum slightly in profit at the moment but uh, trade basically more or less at entry the pound as i said uh, regarding richie sunak and uh, uh, jeremy hunt uh, regarding uh, this uh, not to miss him i always uh, mix him up with james hunt the old formula one racing driver uh, just uh, uh, looking back there was the old not, or not old the new movie um, uh, uh, with the two famous racing drivers hunt and the Austrian guy who was always wearing his red cap, uh, kind of interesting. Um, and uh, now we can observe that the market is uh, also facing this resistance area, causing me to believe again, the market might fall further. It actually looks not bad. Monday higher based on the price development. However, it was just a, it was just a, a gap. And by the way, guys, something else to consider, a gaps are mostly and oftentimes after weekend being closed. So that's something interesting worth considering. If you see a gap, which is actually quite high, we're talking 100 pips, 
quite often 90 percent if not even more of the gap is being closed subsequently before the market it changes direction in this case the market was uh, turning bullish but uh, opening up with the gap over the weekend uh, obviously when the, the news about Richie Sunak had already caught and came out uh, uh, um, and uh, pushed higher in this case uh, as the market is seemingly starting to push to the upside and in this case causing anything which I believe might make sense here. So pushing to the upside and then subsequently closing the gap is the uh, is the key takeaway uh, here and the key takeaway uh, is seemingly a kind of helping market momentum in this case by uh, really closing it thereafter. Now we are trading in a no man's land I would say where else uh, of course on the uh, daily chart the market looks quite interesting to feel and to offer further downside momentum where we could also say uh, the break of the support area here and subsequent push towards uh, all the way this lower area could make up for an interesting uh, trading idea that's the one which has to be the blue line it's a bit hidden here i'm not going to take this trade because i'm on the i'm in the euro dollar short uh, already right now but uh, this would make sense for me maybe even putting the stop loss to the high point uh, in this case so worth considering here if you're following up with my trading strategy i think this makes for a great uh, trading opportunity for my trading account and actually this one has still similar targets compared to what we've taken we've basically sold the market when there was a clear break of this area stop loss to entry so bloop, we got stopped out uh, with a few pips of profit if i can remember correctly on friday last week as the market turned quite bullish, I think, on the political news, uh, Sunak, and so on and so forth. So that's the situation I would say makes sense here for the uh, pound, and it's really not overly bad. Uh, maybe pushing this through to Telegram later as well, you know, to see what we can or could potentially uh, do of some sort. So that's the uh, pound uh, US dollar uh, market and the pound US dollar uh, trade uh, in this uh, case. So what else do we have uh, at the moment? Silver trading steady and that's the belief I have here. Is there any push towards much higher levels at some point or will the market here uh, turn uh, back towards the uh, downside following up with a stronger uh, dollar as we just examined uh, initially not sure at the moment as long as we stay in these uh, higher areas i would say it makes sense that the market continues a bit higher but again it's the same as all the other pairs the currency pairs uh, uh, the euro dollar the pound us dollar among others even the aussie actually is uh, weakening a fair bit um that uh, monday higher closing bearish and then tuesday wednesday thursday market could turn towards uh, some lower levels at least uh, uh, potentially What's up with gold? The same as with silver. So also no news in this case. The same candlestick, the same currencies, uh, uh, the same <laughs> currencies, the same directional momentum I observe here. Still the double bottom, maybe worth considering. Risk reward price. This could, of course, offer something interesting for us here. Let me move the zones back here. If you would say, okay, entering the market when the market starts breaking the resistance area talking about buy trade and having a, having a small stop loss. And those are some trades and some traders are really great at it. Finding some situations where you can get a small entry or you can have a, a small stop loss, not small entry. Uh, here, say uh, 350 pips of stop loss. Initial target would be 380 pips on the way. Previous support now coming from the bottom turning resistance but if the market continues to the upside we can harvest uh, quite a lot of pips towards much higher levels even 660 10 uh, 000, or even more should the market rock towards higher levels uh, i did this a uh, couple of uh, trading uh, days ago when basically we had to i think cpi this was when we celebrated the market falling i closed all the way at the bottom and entered with a small risk a small position size and the market skyrocketed to the upside and i kind of had a nice trade towards higher levels sometimes a bit of luck obviously also helps you however doing your homework right and doing your management right and i'm talking about proper fund management in terms of money management where not like all in risking big is key but uh, small position sizing is the key takeaway which uh, i think makes perfect sense here 
uh, in this current market environment. So, dollar at the moment slightly stronger, euro a bit weaker, pound a bit weaker, gold, silver a bit weaker, oil, uh, we have to see a bit of the geopolitical tensions story. One factor I talked about yesterday to remind you guys as well in oil is that OPEC plus could increase, uh, sorry, decrease their, um, it could increase, decrease their, um, uh, um, their daily, daily supply. And uh, that's obviously then pushing oil markets uh, higher, at least uh, potentially. Uh, what else do we have? We have something interesting regarding the, um, the uh, um, market news from the political side. I don't have it on here. Oh, I don't have it on my email at the moment. Ah, no, sorry, what's here? A German, something interesting here. Um, it's somehow like a weird story which passed my mind, but it kind of got only uh, public in the recent uh, a couple of uh, trading days, or in the recent couple of days, not only trading days here. Uh, Chinese Costco shipping uh, is uh, and was interested in uh, accumulating some more shares for German Harbor. I think it seems to be uh, the container terminal um, uh, Tolerod, which is uh, a part of the Hamburg uh, container uh, terminal. Um, uh, my father's, uh, my friend's dad used to run one of the terminals and he did it from the IT section or IT side, the extreme uh, automation. That was already 15, 20 years ago where the so-called van carriers were automatically offloading from the ships towards storage areas and supplying within that area. Uh, seemingly in the Hala uh, is uh, where Costco was uh, trying to accumulate more uh, shares in, and that's uh, as we talked prior, or as I said prior, the Chinese influence globally is growing big time. And I'm wondering that German politicians uh, might be loved chancellor um, at the moment, uh, Olaf Scholz, even uh, being behind such a deal. I wonder how we can really sell so much of our uh, knowledge of our infrastructure. And that's, to me, critical infrastructure, uh, of course, uh, reminding or remembering as well back uh, back in the days, uh, several years, I think, ago, it was uh, where uh, these automation robots, uh, roboting company KUKA was sold to China, a huge transfer of knowledge again to the land of uh, whatever in China. A very sad story that these uh, deals can happen to me as I'm a fan of engineering and of course know what uh, in Germany it can be done from an engineering uh, point of uh, the background. Some of the German audience here, Johannes, Heiko, you might even uh, know about this as well and uh, would be wondering how you uh, look about uh, certain deals uh, in this case. What else do we have in markets at the moment? Standing a bit steady. Positivity is, is seen here. Stock markets starting to move to the upside. They might offer a bit of uh, positivity uh, actually in the near uh, term here. A falling trend line broken to the upside, retested bullish break here last week on Friday. Monday kind of retracement positive as well. So that would call me a uh, call out for some upside potential. Actually, what I would say, sorry, not the. Uh, the, uh, I wanted to clear. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, the S&P 500. That's something where I see opportunities as well in the current market environment here, at least. Uh, and I would say we could uh, we could play it uh, uh, with any sort of small uh, motivational trade here. That would make for rewards to risk ratio, which is feasible. I wouldn't like to take a big position as of now. I would wait for some further confirmation and then. The market could even raise somehow a bit higher. Counter trend trade, yes, and uh, probably not a position which we might hold on to for an extended period of time, but it's looking quite good, at least for the time being right now, offering upside potential here uh, to begin with. That's the S&P 500. Let's see how it's acting accordingly around the 50 moving average. That's another way to consider, but first of all, it looks uh, quite good that the market, after the bullish push, after the retracement and confirmation of a bullish trend, slightly higher than the previous retracement area. And that's what I see here. The zone is actually not overly bad, right? So technically we are already kind of beyond this zone here right now. That tells me that some sort of upside motivation might be in, in this market here. Obviously as well to begin with, the Euro dollar downtrend would be a bit of a counter trade, right? Stronger dollar, so euro dollar heading, heading lower, pound US dollar heading lower would typically harm the stock market and wouldn't cause the stock market to move higher. But uh, in this case, uh, let's see how this uh, go at the moment back at entry and slightly beyond. All right, guys, that's my take. Thanks for tuning in. All the best here. Happy trading as always. And see you later. Bye bye.